you know what it means to work as a band five nurse? Do you have any idea what it means to work as a band five nurse? Nah, I don't think you do. Welcome back to my channel if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for your continuous love and support and if you're just joining us for the first time do well to join the family and watch this space guys i'm just going to go right into the video and today we're just going to be talking about settling or adjusting into your role as a new band 5 nhs nurse guys i'm not going to tell you it's easy but i'm going to first start by saying this video is not just for international nurses i mean if you schooled in the UK and you've done your OSCE and you've gotten your PIN and you can come and work as a registered nurse, this video is also for you as well. And if you're also an international nurse, it doesn't matter where you're coming from. It could be Nigeria, it could be the Philippines. I think you could benefit as well from this video a lot. So do well to stay and watch to the end of this video. Those that are expecting me to come here and tell them, oh, it's so easy. You're going to just get adjusted into the system. That's a lie. You, I'm talking to you. That's a terrible lie. Guys, being a band five nurse has got to be like the trickiest part of your nursing. And what I mean, basically, I'm not saying it's like the hardest because basically the higher you go in your band, the higher the responsibilities become. But that's not the point. When I say tricky, I mean you're coming into, as an international nurse, you're coming all the way from a different country into a new country, a new system generally and a new health health system entirely and it's probably a specialty you're not even used to so yes it's got to be the trickiest because it's like it's almost like you don't have support you are alone most times you even travel alone i mean if you're like me you come alone so you're not coming with family so it's like you're just on your own no support or whatever you're just relying on whatever support your trust or the care home would give you and even if you studied here as a student nurse it's different now in a way that you are no longer a student. So basically, you're taking responsibility for whatever. You know, as a student, you're hiding under a senior nurse, you know, going about doing things, you know, you could be a truant. But now you're coming in as a staff and you're going to be taking responsibilities. You're going to be accountable. You know, when they ask you what's accountability? Yes. So you're now you're going to be accountable. So it's a totally different ball game and it can be very, very challenging because you're now on your own. You have to take responsibilities and or whatnot. This video is going to teach you ways that you can settle into your role as a new band 5 NHS nurse. So guys, the first tip I'm going to be giving is be confident. Before we go into any other thing, be confident. If you're not confident, you're going to look very messed up. You're going to embarrass yourself in front of your patient, in front of everyone. The patients are expecting a professional to deliver professional care. And feeling shallow or you're not showing the amount of confidence you're supposed to show as a professional nurse or as a registered nurse, they're going to lose the trust they have in you. And that's the worst thing any nurse can anticipate when your patients don't have trust in you because they're not even going to want you to touch them. They're not going to want you to do anything for them. <laughs> so you cannot afford for your patients to lose trust in you. So you always have to stay on top of your game. Even if you don't know what you're doing, you don't have to even know what you're doing. Even if you don't know what you're doing, you can always go by the side and speak to a senior colleague and ask them, oh, how do I do this? How do I get this done? And then you come back to the patient's front and then you're you you know, you're carrying out the tax like you actually know what you're doing. That's how to survive. Because the single moment, the slightest moment, that one second, you show your patient that you don't know what you're doing. That's it. That's the end for you with that patient. They're never going to trust you. And when they meet the next patient, they're going to tell them, mm, she doesn't know what she's doing. And that's almost like the end of their career before it's even starting. So always stay confident. Always stay on top of your game. Even if you don't know what you're doing. Act like you know what you're doing. But don't misquote me. I say act like you know what you're doing does not mean go and start carrying out tasks that you are not capable of carrying out. For when I say act like you know what you're doing, I give an example. If you don't know what to do or you're not sure of how something goes, don't act blank in front of the patient, okay? Stylishly go to a senior colleague and find out how to do that thing appropriately and then come and do it like a pro. That's what I mean. So now, moving on to the second tip. Be proactive. Stay on top of the situation, guys. Like, I, it's basically similar to what I said when I said be confident, be proactive. You don't wait for someone to come and spoon feed you. You were all adults and you left your country miles, thousands of miles 
not to come to a new country to snap. You know that saying, if you snooze, you lose. Yes, so. You don't want to be found snoozing. Okay? So stay proactive. Don't wait for someone to spoon feed you. Don't wait for someone to come and show you oh, what to do here or what to do there. Because most times you're in a fast paced environment. Nobody has time. Nobody really has the time to go around, you know, carry you around like a handbag. So you need to be the one to approach people and ask them or find out things or, you know, take situation up, take matters in your hands, okay? And help yourself out. Yeah, that's it. And now this is going to lead me to the next point I have, which is ask questions. You can never go wrong with asking questions. You can never go wrong with asking questions, but there can be a lot of wrongs when you don't ask questions. Life threatening wrongs. So please, it's a new setting. Nobody's expecting you to know everything, believe me. In fact, when you're coming here, it's almost, even if you've been working in your former country for like 50 years, it doesn't count because it's a different setting. So yes, you're expected to ask, but in fact, when you don't ask questions, they don't see you as someone that knows what they're doing. <laughs> they, want, they, they feel more confident when you're someone that asks questions because then they're confident that if something is gonna go wrong, you're gonna come and ask them to make clarifications. So don't, worry, but don't come here and be thinking that they expect you to know everything. No, they don't expect you to know everything. They expect you to know some things, the basics, but then they know that it's quite different from where you're coming from. So they're not expecting you to know everything. So please ask questions, no matter what. The devices that we use, the equipment we use back in our various countries are quite different or, you know, a little bit different from what you can get when you come here. So please don't hesitate. Ask questions, ask, 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 ask. There's no stupid question. There is no stupid question. Always ask. It is better to be for you to be recorded that you asked than for them to say you not ask. Ah. You don't want to you don't want them to collect your pin when you've not even even started using the pin at all. So please ask questions, guys. Now the next thing is going to be to take notes, guys. There is nobody that is too old to take notes. I will show you. Um, I don't have the jotter that I use. It's just a very small portable jotter. Because when I came in, it was quite challenging for me. You know, trying to adjust. You know, trying to learn things. There were so many abbreviations that were used. And now, guys, if you want me to do a video on some of the abbreviations I've encountered in my specialty where I'm working currently, I'd be happy to do that. So if you want that, please leave. The comment in the comment box below and i'll be happy to do a video on abbreviations used within the hospitals here so guys take note you can get a small jotter it helps it helps to keep you on track i'm going to attach a video um just a picture or a video of the jotter that i use within the hospital and i still carry that in every day i go to work i still have it beside me it really helps it helps to take down note because you can always refer to it when there is something that you're not sure of or there's something you've seen before but you've forgotten something it always helps to take notes don't feel ashamed because when you come here you might be the only one taking notes don't say oh i'm going to be odd i'm going to look odd so i'm not going to take notes please take notes the next point is read 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 you're coming to a new certain most most times where you where you're coming from maybe you've been working as a general nurse maybe in the general medical world or general surgical world and then you're coming into um a cardiology unit it's like a specialty it's just cardiology or it could be like a renal unit of course you don't know you and it's a new setting totally everything you're going to hear might be totally different so you want to read you want to enlighten yourself you want to develop yourself so that when you come to work you you're more familiarized with what they are saying so if you get to work that's why you should have a jotter with you if you get to work if you hear new terms that you're not used to or abbreviations or medical words that you're not used to when you go back home always try to just use your google you know use your phone don't just use phone for snapchat guys or facebook or you know you're tweeting to four seven now it's it's the real world it's the real life you know so you want to go back home every time every day you go back home even if it's a new word you learn or a new meaning or a new definition you learn it's something so always try as much as possible to read spend some time no matter how little it could be 30 minutes it could be one hour depending on your capacity but just make sure you improve yourself always look for what to add to yourself always look for how to add more value to yourself and more knowledge because it really helps so guys the next tip is to ensure you complete all competencies so yes this is not a time that i'm used to from where i'm coming from it's something that you get to do i think everybody has everybody in different trusts would have competencies to sign off so always make sure within the amount of time or the range of time you're given to complete your competencies always show interest in completing those competencies because they really help they help you to take on more 
um, responsibilities that you would like to take on and aside that it makes you responsible you know and you're not like a liability you're an asset so you have to put in the effort you have to put in the interest and show that you are willing to complete your competencies and get all of them signed off because if you're supposed to turn up your competencies in six months and you're taking two years to do it it's a problem nobody wants someone to be slagging behind you're expected to lag, lag a little bit behind sometimes depending but that is how you lag behind becomes a problem you understand uh -huh. so you're going to lag behind a little bit sometimes you would feel withdrawn you would get a challenge that might be too much for you and then you might need an extra time but let's not be too long okay still keep it within the reasonable amount of time so complete all competencies and when you come here everybody's supposed to do a preceptorship program where you are assigned a senior nurse to take care of you there's the three months program and there is the 12 months program depending on how long you've worked in your home country so when you come here ensure you follow up on that program and ensure you complete it and ensure you meet your preceptor when you're supposed to meet up and complete whatever forms you have to complete in due time guys the last thing i'm going to say see these parts I'm going to state and I'm going to say it clearly, loudly for you to hear. Don't come here with the impression of you're coming to look for friends. Haba. For lack of you. Chai. <laughs> Forgive me. But honestly, I mean it. Don't come here with that impression that, oh, I'm coming to look for friends. Then you come to work. Instead of you to face what really brought you there, you're looking for who's going to smile with you. You're looking for who's going to say good morning to you. See, where I'm coming from, Greeting is a big deal. Like, if you pass your senior and you don't greet, it becomes like a beef. No offense, but that is just, it's just fact. But you see here, and I'm going to talk about that one. I'm going to talk about lifestyle difference and all. That one is going to come in a different video. Because here, I tend to greet my matron as, hi, hello, who does that? Where like, I'm coming from? Who is your, who is your father? Uh -huh. But that's not, that's not what we're discussing in this video. But the point is, don't come here and expect that everybody's going to shine it with you or everybody's going to smile with you or everybody's going to try to be your friend. No. You're going to meet some people that are open to being friends with you or to being friendly with you. But you're going to meet so many others that don't even care about you or don't even send you. Send me ahead of the new band, Five Nurse. Came into the UK and hasn't spent up to six months but was referred to the NMC. I don't want to dabble into that story, but basically what happened is he has been making a lot of medication errors, he's not been showing so much competencies, you know, and all that. And, you know, his trust had to refer him to the NMC under six months. And what he said basically when um, he was asked was that people were not showing him support, um, nobody was smiling with him, nobody was being friendly with him, so he was just spending most time, you know, trying to figure out things on his own. If I'm being honest, I didn't see that as an excuse, guys. You're not here to look for friends. You didn't, did you come all the way from Nigeria? You left all your friends, your family, to come to the UK to look for friends, to come to the UK to look for who's going to be smiling with you. Yes, I know it helps when you're working in an environment where everybody's you know, friendly, and it's like people are working together. But it's not everybody that's going to be like that with you. So you have to know how to be personal with people and trying to do your work, because you're here to work. You're not here to play. It's life that so you're trying to save. You're working with life. You're not here to, to, to be looking for who to mingle with. So if you come to work and people are not smiling with you, that should not make you regress. Brother, take, I said, be proactive. Take control of the situation, okay? And, you know, do what you're supposed to do. Don't, if, if you greet someone and the person does not answer you, you pass. It's not like there's a problem or you people are quarreling, but it's just not by, it's not by force. If you greet me, I don't want to answer. It's not by force. It's not, it's not like we have beef. When you come to me with work questions, if you need me to help you do something at work, I'll help you do it. But don't expect that I'll come to work and say, hi, ah, hi, hi, hello. No, that's not what you're here to do. You're here to work. So if people are not friendly with you, stay on top of your game and readjust yourself and start looking for how to do your work seriously. It shouldn't make you not ask questions. So you might see someone, the person might not answer your greeting, but when you go to the person to ask the person questions that pertain to life, they answer you. So don't go and say, okay, because you greeted this person, they don't answer your greeting. You now go and stay somewhere. When you need to ask questions that would, you know, help the patient's life, you will not want to ask. You have seven medications and you have clarifications to make, you will not clarify because you feel like they didn't answer your greeting. I mean, are we, are we, is everything fine? We do keep quiet. Is everything okay? Please, stay on top of your game. Stay on top of your game, please. If you're, you don't, don't come to work with that mindset that you're coming to look for friends. 
I can't overemphasize this because I know it has a tendency to throw you off balance. Because when you come and you greet someone and the person just passes you, like, you're like, oh my God, yeah, am I like this? But that's not the point. When you have it at the back of your mind that you are here for the patient and not for your colleagues, it gives you a whole total different perspective. Maintain a cordial relationship, but don't start like, over expecting that everybody's going to smile with you or shine teeth with you. No, it's not going to be that way. You're going to face a lot of difficulties if you come with that kind of mindset okay so if you agree they don't answer fine pass but when you have to ask some questions please approach that person and ask they will answer you okay don't use that as an excuse it's not an excuse make mistakes and put patients life at risk no so guys that's where i'm going to stop so i hope with this few tips i've been able to you know give you an insight of how you're going to settle into your band five rule and please it might sound like these tips are just intangible but it's not i promise you that if you take into consideration every single thing that i've said from this video you're going to see how it's going to help you because that's what has been helping me that's what has been working for me and i am proud to sit down here and tell you and make this video i've been working for the past four months okay this is going to make the fourth month i mean the end of april and it took me this time to come and tell you or make this video so yes i know what i'm saying and i'm speaking from experience so this points have helped me and it's going to help you ease into the profession or the new role that you're in so don't take it lightly and try to apply as much as you can so i've come to the end of this video guys if you've loved this video do well to like share and subscribe as well let's grow this family guys and i'm just coming back from work and i decided to come and make this video for you guys so please encourage me and subscribe as well so i can bring more beautiful content to you guys and like I said, if you want me to do a video on different abbreviations used in the UK, please leave the comments. And if you have any other kind of questions or videos you'd like to see, also let me know in the comment section below. So to my next video, guys, you guys just stay awesome. I love you all. Bye.